Hi everyone, my name is Bianca Hughes and I'm an English teacher and I'm going to you know, take seven minutes to talk to you about project-based learning. It's going to be a very quick overview so I hope that you guys learn something from this very quick presentation. Okay, um, so my name is Bianca Hughes, I'm an English teacher in Australia living on Sydney's northern beaches. I teach at a public high school. This is my little family. And it's because of my family, particularly my two boys there that you can see, that I do project-based learning. And hopefully you'll find out why um, by the end of this presentation. Okay, in Australia, in New South Wales, we have a great big summative exam at the end of the schooling career called the HSC. And I think that it's a blunt instrument and it's killing my kids and it's killing them slowly but surely. Um, and I don't want to teach to a test. Okay, one thing that I have to say straight up about project-based learning is that you should be doing it your way. There's no one particular model that you should adhere to with project-based learning. So like Sid Vicious, do it your way. It may be less bloody and messy than him right there, but it may very well prove to be quite messy and bloody because project-based learning is hard. All right, so these are the elements of project-based learning. Um, you need to start off with a hook or what some people call an entry event, so a big sort of exciting event that grabs the attention of your students and makes them realize that they're going to learn differently in a new way um, and really provokes some questions and some um, you know, intrigue right from the very beginning. Driving questions. Um, the driving question is what literally drives the project. It encourages the kids to keep going. Driving questions are difficult to write but they need to be open-ended and they need to encourage the kids to ask more questions, some little sub-questions. There's lots of resources online for writing great driving questions. Real-world problems. As we know, our world isn't perfect. In fact, it's pretty shitty and predictions are that, you know, the human race could be completely obliterated before long. So project-based learning makes kids do what this little guy's doing in the picture to actually engage with the real world instead of just dealing with school separately from the world. Um, here's some examples of driving questions that actually get my kids to kind of engage with the world. Um, they, some of them are obscure and some of them are quite direct. So can cyborgs write poetry? That doesn't seem very, you know, uh, real world. But then when we start getting to the ethics of what is a cyborg and what is poetry, you realize it is. Assessment. I guess the assessment that we're all used to is that end of um, unit of work, assessment which is summative um, assessment of learning but assessment runs all the way through project-based learning at the beginning in the middle at the end it's peer assessment self-assessment and teacher assessment at the heart of all project-based learning is inquiry so the kids need to be investigating something that they are interested in and that they're passionate about. So this shouldn't be a phony teacher project. You should really, you know, uh, when you get good at this, you should get the kids to start asking, you know, the driving questions. Um, some people say that project-based learning is product-driven. I don't think it is. I think it's process-driven. But a product is something, um, you know, that, that the kids at the end can show their learning through the product. And the product drives the inquiry and hopefully, you know, you'll see in a minute, it is presented to a real world audience. So the kids themselves, they're no longer just writing essays for the teacher or creating products just for the teacher or their parents to see. They're connecting with the world and it's a, it's a global world. We've got the internet. Okay, so this is just an example for you guys to see some of the products that my students have um, worked towards as part of their projects. So there's some interesting things there. Um, Anthology of Short Stories publishes an ebook, and as we know, ebooks can now be accessed and sold on a variety of um, websites or through iBooks. Um, and here's some other examples I just wanted to show you guys. Um, and, and down the bottom, you can see the beginning of a project outline. I think as a teacher, you need to be really thinking, you know, can I give an outline for the students that will just help them keep on task? One of my students has made a, uh, he transformed a poem that he wrote into a machinima. If you haven't heard of that before, he used Call of Duty to make a video, which was kind of cool. Um, so just getting back to what I was saying about project outlines, these are some that I've created and in the ideal world you'll get the kids to end up creating these. It's important that you get them to engage really openly and honestly with the pedagogy, you know, with the way that you're teaching as well as why you're doing it. 
So um, you can see all of those on my Edmodo group if you want to join it, just send me a tweet. Um, and this is what I was talking about, student voice and choice. Ultimately when you get good at um, project-based learning, there'll be greater student voice. They'll get to say, I want to do a project on this, I'm worried about this incident. But you can see here, you know, this is a, a protest by young people. Young people have been protesting for ages. Let's give them the voice in the classroom. Lots of teachers say that project-based learning looks, you know, it's chaotic. A project-based classroom looks chaotic, it's noisy, but there are some ways of organising that chaos. So um, processes, procedures, um, routine is still part of PBL. There's a whole bunch of um, tools that you can use to help you with your project-based learning experiment. It's always an experiment. My favourite is Edmodo. Um, I like to blog, so WordPress is good. Kids love to blog and maybe something like Class Dojo to help the kids um, stay on task. All right, so this is you. You're, you're the handsome um, project leader. Yeah, I, this was it was hard for me to find an image. But these are some of the qualities that you're going to need. So it, it's a big sort of professional learning curve, I think, for the teacher as well. But you need to be likeable. You know, and you need to be resilient because your first project's probably going to fail. Why will it fail? Because your students will be frustrated that, that, that you're not spoon feeding them. The systems will frustrate you because you'll have a pre existing assessment schedule that you need to fit into, and, and you won't want to. Um, the kids themselves, they lack some skills uh, research skills, teamwork skills. You've got to teach those things. And if you want to get any help, you can go to my blog. I always write about my classroom experiments, my failures, my successes. But Edutopia, Buck Institute for Education, um, really important sources for you guys. So check them out. I really encourage you to have a go. Take a risk and experiment with project-based learning.